verse 3. Uh, Pastor Dante says, uh, our know that um, uh, John 7 and 3 is, the conjunction in there is Kai. And, uh, and so, and I also heard that not only the meaning of Kai is one. So, okay, then, okay let's three. open our Bibles to Titus chapter 1, verse 4. <laughs> You know how important that is? In my youthful years, I uh, finished all the evidences. I tried to inquire all the evidences. And this is one of the evidences. They used Titus uh, 2... 30? Titus 2.30. The great God and Savior. Now, that's the word Kai. And... Now, if you go to verse 4, this is one of the answers. Uh, Titus 1, 4, please read for us. Sister Shereen. The microphone is there. Titus 1, 4. If uh, she can read, she can read. But for the moment, you read. To, to Titus, my own son, after the common faith, grace, mercy, and peace, from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ our Savior. Now, notice, he uses the same word Kai. A Greek of N is Kai. Now, you notice there are two articles, the. See that? The, from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So, how many of you are familiar with the wheel of prophecy? None. You should have all uh, copies of that. Uh, it is a quick way of refuting the Trinitarians. How many Savior do we have? What Savior? And there's a scripture in the Old Testament. God the Father is our Savior. Jesus Christ is our Savior. Peace, what is the same thing? But biblically, in what we're teaching here, God can raise up a Savior to represent Him. If you understand theophany, God could use angels. He eventually used his son as a permanent theophany. So God sent the Father, I'm sorry, the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. So the Saviorship of our Lord Jesus Christ was given by the Father. He was made Lord in Christ. That's what the Bible said. So, so to understand the biblical one is this. There is the Father and there is the Son. Are they one? Yes and no. Yes because they became one. No because it's not the Father pretending to be the Son. We have to grow in our understanding. Now if you go to Titus 2.13, then we could understand this more clearly. This is Kai. Okay? Let's go to Titus 2.13. Looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Now they would say, God and Savior is Jesus Christ. Now, although I'm not against terminology, but let's go to the original apostolic understanding. God is the Father. He's, all, he's the Savior of all things. There's a scripture that, I forgot that verse. There's a scripture that says, God is the Savior of all things. But he granted, he used, he put his saviorship to his son Jesus Christ. So when he appears, not just as a spirit, not just as a Holy Ghost, he appears with the body of his son Jesus Christ. And since God is dwelling in his son, then we see the same thing. We see the one and the same thing. We see God, His Father, dwelling in Him, and we see the Son, Jesus Christ. Because God is invisible, we see only the Son to be the visible image of the invisible God. So, there's no contradiction there. Uh, let me give another scripture before you ask your next question. John 17, 3. I'd like to answer this. I remember this question was asked to... Pastor Downwoods, that uh, also the word Kai, 
I'd like to give a more simple answer to this oneness question. This is life eternal, that they may know thee the only true God. Who was speaking? Who is speaking? Christ. Christ. Jesus Christ. So who he, who he, who was he referring to as the only true God? His Father. Now, if His Father is the only true God, is He another God? No. So, the word Kai talks about knowing the Father and the Son. It's not saying God is the Father and the Son. He said, knowing the Father and knowing the Son will give you eternal life. That So the same word Kai talks about knowing. You must know both. There's a scripture for that. If you have fellowship with the Father, you should have fellowship with the Son because that's the will of the Father. If you have, truly have the Son, you also have the Father. If they claim we are, we have the Father in our side, but you reject the Son, then you don't have the Father on your side. So, the, Jesus Christ is not the only true God here. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That's why He was talking to God. Knowing the only true God, even the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, and knowing Him in the right understanding, that is what will bring you eternal life. Another verse related to this. You all know this verse? No. John 20, 17. Who memorizes it? Touch me not, for I have not yet ascended to my Father, and your Father, to my God, and your God. So we, what you said, Pastor, I want to do was correct. INK has partial truths in them. But we have to progress from that truth. What truth did they miss? Let me say this. So there's nothing wrong with what they teach. It's just that they have closed their minds from further revelation. It's the further revelation that we have to understand. The fullness of the Godhead dwelt in him bodily. So Jesus Christ inherited the nature from the Father. Not just that. Jesus Christ inherited his name from the Father. That's what the IAK doesn't know. And Jesus Christ is part of the Holy Ghost. Did you know that the INK understanding of the Holy Ghost is similar with the extreme oneness? Why? So with the Spirit of the Father. INK and the oneness denominations today have the same understanding of the Holy Ghost. It's just the Spirit of the Father. But what they did not have yet to understand is the Spirit of the Son, the atoning Lamb of God, is part of the Holy Ghost that in seals the church to be part of his body today. So there's a difference. So they, they explain the same thing too. I can explain the same thing that Jesus Christ has a Father which is our God. So there are similar explanations but you have to be thorough in truth. So these are part of the truth that was not yet mentioned. Okay, next question. Um, for Francis, um, I heard uh, a while ago that uh, Pastor Jaffe said that um, Jesus Christ is the Father. Well, yes, yes, yes. Uh, it's a usual terminology. That's why, I, that's why I mentioned it a while ago. Of Jesus course. Christ is the Father. But why did 1 Corinthians 15 that Jesus Christ come to the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom of, the kingdom of God? Well, you know, I came from a previous church that has some oneness explanations. I have a familiar pastor, Rudy Villegosa. He was previously a priest, but that was a long time ago, 1970s. Now, anyway, um, he had an explanation similar to the oneness with regards to the one sitting on the throne. But later, he was converted to another pastor in the United States that explained that 
when the son surrenders up the kingdom so he will revert back to being God again so your question is in Corinthians chapter 15 open up uh, tell your children to open up verse 24 you can meditate this at home okay then come at the end when ye shall have delivered up the kingdom to God it's like this, at the end of the millennial kingdom reign. Here is how the one is explained. There is an end to the sonship. Because the one wants to refute the Trinitarians. The Trinitarians has a terminology, the eternal son. This terminology is being refuted by saying, he was begotten, so he was not in the eternal past. I agree with this. But, they also explain, there's an end of the sonship. When does the sonship end? At first, when he had surrendered up the kingdom to the Father. It's as though, without saying it directly, he's putting on a show, but that show will end. No offense. Did you know that these Wakis and Trinity are somewhat cousins? I'll tell you why. The word person is a mask. It was not originally the explanation of Athanasius. When Tertullian used that word in a play, an actor to play three different roles. He was explaining the same way the oneness would explain it. When Tertullian invented the word Trinitas, he was not thinking of a trinity like Athanasius do today, did in later years, in the later centuries. So, according to Tertullian, or according to other oneness, the son is just a mask put on by the father. After that role is finished, he will remove that mask and he will revert back to being the father. Now, this is what I beg to disagree with. Amen. He gave up the kingdom, but he will not disappear as a son. Amen. There are two versions of the oneness. The other version, when he went up into the heavens, his body just fizzled up. Parang singaw na wala. And the other would wait until the end of the millennium. But these two are wrong. The sun will eternally be there. If you read the book of Revelation in the eternal age, the sun will be there. The land will be there. It's an eternal memorial to the creation of the world. Not just the salvation of man. All things are made by Him. You understand by? There is the existence of the Son. The Son will never disappear from the creation of the world to the end of time. But for all eternity. So the eternal Son could be correct in the sense that we also receive eternal life. Do you believe Jesus Christ also has eternal life? Amen. 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 He should, because we inherited from Him. He was the first one to have that. So the eternal Son, to be understood correctly, the Son will never, may never disappear. So the error of eternal Son is from its inception that He was a co-equal God the Son. That is how you explain it. There is no eternal son as God the Son. But the Son, Jesus Christ, has eternal life. He will never end. He will not disappear as a son. He's our bridegroom. Are we going to marry our father-in-law? No. We're going to marry the Son of our father-in-law, Jesus Christ. So, 
when Jesus Christ is up, gives up the kingdom, what will happen? He is our elder brother. How many Christians? Is God our elder brother? No. Jesus Christ is our elder brother. Not just a body. But a living spirit. In the Bible said we will be like Christ. We will become, will we become God the Father? No. We will become like the Son of God. In its image. If we will become like Christ, we will appear just like He is. Then, it's because what happens after the millennium, after the eternal age, we, Jesus Christ is just the first born among many prophets, and we as the prophets of Christ will be in His image. Not as God the Father, but as the sons and daughters of God. Receiving His fullness. Remember the word, fullness. We, right now, we do not have the fullness. We have a measure. But when the time comes, we receive the fullness. He will be just our elder brother. He was the first one to receive the fullness. And He poured out that fullness for us to inherit the, the same way. And one day, we also will receive that fullness. And He will be our elder brother. In the eternal age, it's not just Jesus Christ that will be saved by the world. But the bride of Christ. The new Jerusalem. So today we see Christ because He is the image of the invisible God, the, the, the permanent theophany of God. But one day we also will become the theophany of God. If the understand when God used the angels as theophany, those angels had their own mind, their own will, but they surrendered it to God. So this is part of the mystery. Okay, any, any other questions, Brother Nato? Yes, eternal has no beginning. Has a beginning. This day I have begun. The so this is the part that was correct. When the oneness refused the Trinitarians, this is the part that is correct. This is the other part that is not correct. The part that is correct is his beginning. There's only God in the beginning. The sun was in the lotus. Did you know? Aside from the sun, the bride and the church is also in the lotus. Can you see yourself there? That's why we have to progress in our understanding. Now, at the end, the sun will never disappear. But will multiply. And we will have reverence. Sons and daughters of God in this image. Okay, any other questions? How many minutes did I take on? Oh, Brother Mena. Brother Miona. Together, come together. I'll take it at the same time. Okay, uh, to explain that the statement of Jesus Christ before our man was saying, then in Exodus, in Exodus, when Moses asked him, what is the mother? What is your father? Uh, one thing, I, I am the man. He said, I am the man. It's a lengthy discussion, so, Brother Mano. So Jesus Christ quoted, I, I am. am, yeah. So, is Christ. How do I explain that? A good question. Is, is that verse has been used by oneness also to explain it was the Father, we can the Son, I can the Son. Okay. I'd like to answer quickly. Did you know that there are many scriptures that has a parallel explanation? No, no. I'm going to give you an example. Before Abraham was I, was it the father speaking or the son who was speaking? You say God. How many say son? How many say it's God the father? Raise your hands. How many say it was the son? Raise your hand. How about the other? Okay. It's both. You can apply both. How? Theophany, it was God the Father speaking through the Son. So Abraham saw God the Father in his manifestation, the Old Testament. So, when Jesus Christ spoke in his lips before Abraham was, I am. God, that, that I am that was God, was there. And there's nothing wrong in it was spoken through the lips of Jesus Christ. Because... The Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself. 
What's the power that will fill me? That's one answer. That's the theophany side. There's another answer, which is the logos side. And this is something that Trinitarians are hard to understand. Before Abraham was, Jesus Christ was already in the world. Not as another being, that like the Arians do, but as a plan of God. God would not create all things without Jesus Christ, without by foreknowledge, by omniscience, He saw the Son who overcome. That's why He patterned all creation because of the Son. John 1, 3, all things were made by Him and nothing was made. Without Him was not anything made that was made. So because of the Son, all things were made. Before Abraham was the Son, what did John the Baptist say? He was preferred before me. John the Baptist was preferred, but there was someone who was preferred more than John. And this is not God. This is the Son. But he, he did not yet exist, but he was already chosen. He was already predestined. He was already foreknown. To be our bridegroom, to be our Savior, to be the source of all creation. Of God's inspiration in creation. So before Abraham was, let, let me say Jesus Christ as speaking of himself. He was already there. When God made promise to Abraham, he was already foreshadowing the coming of Christ. So before Abraham was, I was there. As the logos of God. But that is. Oh, God, Proverbs 822, the Trinitarian scholars agree that it is a personification of wisdom. Uh, David K. Bernard also uh, talked about Proverbs 822 because he was answering the Trinitarians. Personification is not living things will be spoken of as living thing. And if you want to be strict about it, it was spoken as she. Was it a female? <laughs> no, it was the wisdom of God. And this wisdom was also partnered with prudence. I wisdom well with prudence. Would there be another being called prudence? Like if Eliseo Soriano would say, the sun was already there. Because the sun... <laughs> Uh, grew up in his presence. How about prudence? Also grew up in his presence. So I, he stood on the every gate of the city, crying on the men, calling out on the men. Every mountain top, every rooftop. So you know it's not literal. It's a personification of wisdom. If you read the whole chapter, not just Proverbs 8, the whole Proverbs, you'll see the wisdom being personified there. Why would he be focusing only on verse 22 to 30? He's deceiving the people. Amen. Let's say, oh, sorry, yeah. Okay. We're not famous, but we'll never receive any challenge. <laughs> okay. In Revelation chapter 1, verse 8, Jesus is speaking. But Before, uh, no, uh, Alpha and Omega. Alpha, I am the Alpha and Omega, yes. the Almighty. The Almighty. The it's like this. The same way with the same with Theophany and Logos. Jesus in in Revelation. Hello, everyone. In Revelation chapter one, could you give me the title? Uh, maybe you can recharge this. Recharge this. So, in Revelation 1 and 8, Jesus Christ was speaking in behalf of the Father because the Father was dwelling in Him. The Stephen, the Almighty. But there is also Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. In verse 17, I was, or 16, I was dead and was made alive. Does God die? No. God does not die. So that's the Son. And He's speaking, I was in the beginning and also the end. This is called from the Old Testament. The Old Testament does not have Alpha and Omega. Because these are Greek letters. Proving that the Old New Testament was written in Greek. So, when John wrote Alpha and Omega, it's proof that the book of Revelation was written in Greek. Alpha and Omega's equivalent in the Old Testament is the beginning and the last. Now, 
If God the Father is the beginning and the last, there's nothing wrong with that. We could easily understand it. It is the Creator. But how about the Son being the beginning and the end? It's because, again, He is the inspiration of God in creation. He is the cause of all creation. He was the Logos. The meaning of the Logos is the cause of all creation. So, He is the beginning and the end because he, it is because of Jesus Christ all things were created. And there's a the scripture for that. All things created, okay, thou art worthy, because thou hast created. So because of him, all things were created. But Sister Anna, you could just stay near the camera so your voice will be recorded. Five verse seven. Who took the book out of the right? Good question. Thank you for the question. Um, what Pastor explained a while ago uh, is the old explanation by Raymond Jackson by Pastor Vinigo. But uh, Brother Gang, Brother Branham's explanation, Brother Ben Watts' explanation is much better. But I'm not saying they're both wrong. The one sitting on the throne, could you erase this? The one sitting on the throne. I'm going to follow through what Pastor said a while ago. This is the throne. Let's say this is the throne. The one sitting on the throne is Jesus Christ as a judge. And the Lamb that came to take the scroll out from the hand of the one sitting on the throne is Jesus Christ as the Lamb. So the initial explanation is Jesus Christ as a judge has no right to un unravel the scroll or loose, break the seals. The high priest has no right except he was sprinkled with the blood of the Lamb. And Jesus Christ is also at the same time the Lamb of God. Jesus Christ, as the Lamb of God, is the one that has the right to break the seals. Without the Lamb, there is no creation. There is no redemption. This is the book of redemption. This is the book of life. This is the book of revelation. And that will not be unraveled without the Lamb pouring out His blood. So, you can say, when you are being, you're recruiting, hiring a janitor, you require an experience. And someone comes, I'm a graduate of this. PhD, DND. But the requirement was you must have one year experience as a janitor. All your overqualified <laughs> diplomas and certificate would not qualify you to work as a janitor. Do you have experience at least one year? Now, if it was even how overqualified he is, he's a graduate, summa cum laude, magna cum laude. He would not be, he would not be accepted as a janitor because he didn't have that qualification. Let's say he had the qualification. Yes, before I got those diplomas and certificate, I was a janitor for one year. Oh, you're accepted. Not because of those diplomas. He was accepted because he fit that qualification that was required of him. Same way, the one that I can lose the seals is the lamb. Not the king, not a judge. Now, this explanation could be, uh, this comes from a oneness, traditional oneness explanation. This could be misunderstood. So that, there's nothing wrong with that explanation. But what is wrong is that how the oneness would insist that God the Father would pretend to be son. God pretending to be a lamb to die on the cross. So there are one that explains that way. 
see? Now, Brother Brother, Brother Ben Howard, Brother God, explain somewhat better. I'm, saying, I'm not saying this explanation is wrong. I'm going to give you another explanation. A more simplistic explanation. The one sitting on the throne is God the Father. And the one that came to take the scroll is the Son of God, Jesus Christ. As simple as that. That takes care of things. But both explanations are not wrong. But uh, be careful on how you understand the Godhead. God would never pretend or lie about himself. It is impossible for God to lie. Okay, other questions? No more questions? Okay, uh, you translate for him. Let's say in Africa there are translators. Stand up so we can be famous there. We're gonna show our videos there. Stand up. What's your question? Uh, if he gave his question to you, you can say the question. Yes, for redemption. This vision of John is for redemption. Okay, brother. That's in my father's house and many mansions. I go to prepare place for them. Well, there are no, the mansions there are the bodies, the glorified bodies. The father's house, the father's house, that's the heavenlies. And the mansions there are the bodies. There's a song. I've got a mansion over the hilltop. But many people are imagining carnal physical things. What is more glorious than the one that was molded by the hands of God? God there is not in temples made with hands, but with his hands. Okay. Uh, you can stand near the camera so it will be your voice will be recorded. Just stay near the camera. Just stay near the camera so the question will be recorded. My question is, why Paul written in Hebrews 13, 8? Oh, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, forever. Okay, good question. That verse has been used to say, He's God the Father, He's God is eternal. Okay, you look at the context, look at the previous verses. Communicate. What is this? This is His lifestyle, this is His faithfulness. This is His sturdiness. You know, God is the rock, but Christ is the rock. How can Christ be the rock? We also are the rock. Did you know that? Because Christ was standing on God. Christ was found on His foundation is God Himself. And if we stand on the foundation of Christ, we built unto Him a temple, a glorious temple. Peter, as a small rock, is also part of that rock that will stand upon the rock that is Christ. And Christ is standing upon the rock that is God. So, Jesus Christ is saying yesterday, for, today, and forever. Because His faithfulness will not end. Not like us. We could waver. We could change. We could change our minds. We are fallible. He is infallible. So that is what Paul was exhorting the believers. In Hebrews 13. How we must... Uh, we remain steadfast in our faith. And that's the steadfastness of Christ. And that's the message in the book of Revelation. Even as I also overcame. So we must overcome. That's the message. It's a misinterpretation to say that was talking about the God here. You're taking the verse out of context. Okay? okay. Brother Jake? Brother uh, Francis, please. Uh, good question. Now, how many could me uh, memorize, memorize that verse? Could you quote that verse, Pastor, in King James? By the way, if you're not using King James, there's a change in that verse. In King James, what does it say, Pastor? Behold. Oh, the microphone. 
It's not yet God himself. When that person grows up and God will indwell him, then there will be a direct theophany. The direct theophany when the fullness of God dwells in his son. That's the direct theophany of God in Jesus Christ. So, that's the right understanding of theophany with regards to the Son. Of course, it does not end there. It can even proceed to the church, to the bride. Okay, let's, uh, what? Uh, does that satisfy you, Pastor? Next question. So, uh, So, uh, I am right if uh, if this is what I'm hearing from you that the Holy Ghost is uh, the Spirit of Jesus is part of the Holy Ghost. The Son of God. The Spirit of the Son of God. Yes. In the New Testament is become part of the Holy Ghost because they become one. They're, they're united. We've read the scriptures. He is the one of the Lord is one spirit with Him. So, their Lord Jesus Christ has His own God, His Father. He's all His Lord. Now, He became, he became one with Him as the fullness indwelled Him. It's just, just not just a temporary dwelling. It's a permanent dwelling where in their spirit they merge. They become one. So, when he poured out his spirit in the New Testament, the Son was there. So we read all the scriptures. The Holy Ghost is interceding. The Holy Ghost is crying, Abba, Father. The Holy Ghost is waiting for revelations that he will hear before he will speak. So those are the scriptures. Any further clarification? You said a while ago that the sun will not disappear. Yes, I understand this. This is right, no? That the sun will not disappear during, uh, during uh, the future, the yeah, eternal age. Yeah. So, uh, but my question is about his rule being a sun. It's like this. The sun of God Jesus Christ will remain a son. What will disappear is his exclusivity. Let me explain this exclusivity. Right now, exclusivity. No one can come to the Father but by me. That's exclusivity. Uh, there's one mediator between God and man, that's the man Jesus Christ. That's exclusivity. You cannot pass through any other mediatrix, not Mary, not the saints or the apostles, only Jesus Christ. Now, one day, when the saints are taken up, the saints are glorified to be in His image, the rest of humanity that will not that will not be thrown in the lake of fire, the rest of humanity that will still be in their natural bodies, that's not part of the bride, the heathens were, that were educated in the millennium, they will no longer just see Jesus Christ. They will see the bride, Jesus Christ, in His church. So imagine, new, uh, let me call it the New Jerusalem. This new Jerusalem, the heavenly Jerusalem, Jesus Christ and the rest of the glorified saints will be seen as a whole as the theophany of God. So, let's talk about the subject of Jesus Christ. It will no longer be exclusive. It's not directly Jesus Christ saving or... or uh, Fellowshipping with the ordinary, more, uh, not more, natural people. It will be the whole church with his saints, Jesus Christ among them, that is fellowshipping with the rest of the world. That's the eternal age. Uh, uh, this is my uh, question, by the way. 
illustration. So, uh, about the reopening of God, yes. the people's prophecy, who are those people? The theophany of God? No. Uh, the new city, the holy city in New Jerusalem, and when you read the Bible, it was described as the body of Christ. Just Christ is the head, the church is the body. Now, in the future, when the church will be glorified, it will become the kingdom. This will be seen as a whole, as one new man in Christ. Christ is the head, this is the body. But inside, there are many individual members that will, that's why it's for the city, that will fellowship with men. That's why we read in the book of Revelation, they will wipe away the tears. God, that's still funny. God will wipe away the tears from their eyes, but it will be through those believers. And you read in the book of Revelation, they will bow down and even worship at the feet of those that that were persecuted in the church age. So they, they become theophanies as a whole and individually. We will be like Christ, what was said in 1 John, in other scriptures. We will be like Christ. It is the fullness, in the fullness of God. So, meaning, when we say that they will become like Christ, so it means that they, they are the called fullness. or they are called a theophany of God. Theophany. Yes, yes. The, the church will eventually become a theophany of God. The church will become the theophany of God. Yes. Okay. What's this? Okay, so the church will be raptured or will yes, be glorified away, glorified, glorified, yes. glorified and God uh, passed Okay, and uh, it will be with Christ in the right? So, so, uh, Another question. So, uh, still the same. My question is: So the sonship? Yes, I know that Jesus. They will not uh, remove his uh, mask, or you know, uh, and then uh, will remove his sonship like that. No, that kind of illustration is not the same. It's still the same uh, uh, the person that uh, we uh, see during that time. So uh, the question is about the role of the uh, sonship of Jesus, his rule, his uh, redemption, uh, the redemption process. Because you know that, that God or Jesus Christ, after 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 uh, he surrendered everything to himself. And uh, his redemption, the redemption process is already finished during the time. Precisely, good. that's a good question. So, when the, it's not the, uh, the sonship disappearing, but his rule. Because the redemption is over, so the redemptive role has changed into a rulership role, and the church becomes four kings with Christ. And now, since the, in the millennium, the natural citizens there, they, they're not going to undergo the same process that we do, where we pass through this born again experience sealed by the Holy Ghost. They will be just human populated, like it was in the time of Adam, that they will be taught, they are even called heavens. So, it's not just Jesus Christ in this millennial kingdom. It's also the church that will be glorified, that will become the bride, the wife of Jesus Christ. And this uh, new Jerusalem will, will be what the whole world sees. Jesus Christ just being part of it. Okay? The Son of God. So there are many sons and daughters of God within that uh, picture. Now, the role in the church ages is over. So that's how it changes changes its ministry. Uh, what we call the son of David ministry. From being the son of man, to the son of God, to the son of David. Now, the role of son of David, when it ends, it will revert back in eternal age, back in the time of Adam. Now, Christ said, we will become like angels. 
When you will become like angels, we will be in the spirit realm, while people of the world will be in their natural realm. If they want to go to outer space, they will be the ones who will copy the Star Trek. But we, by just a thing, a twinkling of an eye, by just a thought, we will travel to other parts of the universe. So we we live in a different realm. We can also manifest in the physical realm. But we live in a higher realm in the presence of God. The angels. So we believe that uh, we will become more than an angel, more than an angel during the time. Amen. Because because how Jesus Christ was the fullness of God, we also will be will be the fullness of God. Now you can understand the depth of let us make man in our image. Okay, the plural image. This image of God is not just being holy, homoousius. This image is homoousius, exact same nature of God. He had the same exact same manifested deity, a homoousius of God. Okay, so the Lamb of God, okay, and the one who sat on the throne was God, and the one who picked up the book was the Lamb of God. And why? The book. Huh? Yeah, okay, the, one the book in the right hand of him sitting on the throne. The Lamb of God will take the book because uh, being overcome the sight of God earns him the right to break the seals of redemption. So who is the one who set on the throne? So I gave a two explanation. They thought these two explanation does not contradict each other. Earlier, I followed suit on what you explained Jesus Christ as a judge. Now, the second explanation I gave, it was God the Father. But since God the Father is a spirit, so it is just the Son of God that has a body that sits on the throne of his Father in heaven. So, there's nothing wrong if we say that's God the Father sitting on the throne. Now, there's nothing wrong if we say that's Jesus Christ sitting on the throne because God the Father is dwelling in His Son, Jesus Amen. Christ. Amen. But again, the, the pre-qualification to break the seals is being the man, the overcomer. Okay, the overcome. Okay, so okay, during the white judgment, please bring it here. Okay, uh, during the white judgment, who are the people? Uh, who are the judges? Judge, First Corinthians six one, all of us, because we will be judging angels. Jesus Christ, as a judge, will grant his judgment to other believers. You know, we are under training today how to judge our within ourselves. Because one day, we are supposed to judge others. Others. So, right now, we are under training. We should grow. Uh, Pastor, is it okay we continue at 8 o'clock? Or, okay, let, let's ask 15 minutes, more questions for 15 minutes. And later, we're going to continue at 8 o'clock. Uh, while ago, you said that uh, the Holy Spirit had the dual nature. Could you, could you bring that the uh, Holy Spirit had the dual nature? Yes, yes, I mentioned that. Okay. We know Jesus Christ has a dual nature. What is that dual nature? So the Holy Spirit. His humanity, the first nature. The second nature is God dwelling in Him. Now, the, the Spirit within Jesus Christ, the human Spirit, became one with the Spirit of God. We read that all ago. So that's the Holy Spirit in the New Testament. Okay, let me continue. So the Spirit that is in Christ and the Spirit of God that indwelled Him became one. And this is the one that, this is the Spirit that He poured out on Pentecost, which we read a while ago, that indwelled the believer. In which he mentioned the Father and the Son dwelling in the believers, abounding upon them and becoming one with them. Okay. So, I gave some proofs of this duality because not everyone believes that. Okay? 
I, as, I said a while ago that I and the traditional ones don't believe that, that there's a human side. So uh, here uh, in this, uh, the Holy Spirit, the dual nature of the Holy Spirit. Yes. So what is this dual nature in uh, the Let me give you an example. The Spirit of God gives us power. That's why before born again experience, they had power. But this is not yet becoming one. They were just given power when the presence is there. Now, before he had fell, the Spirit did not become one with God yet, but he is protected by the presence of God from dying. He is immortal. Now, the Spirit of God brings power, but the Spirit of the Son brings humility. The Spirit of the Son brings submission to God. So there's an aspect of Jesus Christ that teach us how to approach God. You're not just given power, but you're also taught humility, how to pray, how to call on Him, Abba, Abba, Father. So what I frequently use the word barren. It is the Spirit of God that will bring us into that barren spirit of walking in the life. This is this is the second the dual nature. The second dual nature. And as Christ said, this is eternal life, knowing the Father and the Son. If you don't have the Son, then you don't have the second dual nature. You don't have Christ in you, the Son. You don't have the Lamb, the Bridegroom. More so if you have a misconception about Christ as the Father himself, then it complicates the th more of the things. Okay. Should we continue at 8 o'clock faster? Or you have further questions? Others? Do you have other further questions? Others? So we're going to continue at 8 o'clock faster. It's all right with you. 8 o'clock. So. Okay, this, uh, this so do you believe that uh, we receive the fullness of the Godhead? Okay, again. This is what I heard going ago, that we will receive the fullness amen, amen. of the Godhead. We will receive, because that's the meaning of the word earnest. We receive a partial, a measure. So, one day, when all will be redeemed, then we will receive the fullness. Okay, the fullness of our salvation. The fun. The earnest, the earnest of our salvation. That the, the, the verse there was quoted. We will receive that earnest of our salvation, right? We, those who are saved today already receive that. Those that seal. Now, on the day of redemption, when God will claim, when Christ will claim his bride. Then we will receive the balance of that deposit. That, that's the fullness of His Spirit. That's why the part of the person, one day we will become like Him. Okay. Uh, so meaning, the one that we will receive from God is the fullness of His Godhead. That's what we're saying. Yeah. Not the fullness of our salvation. It, goes at the same time. It happens at the same time. When you will receive the fullness, you will also be redeemed in your body. You will have you your bodies will be glorified. So it goes and that's the also the fulfillment of man in the image of God. Creating man, making man, creating man in his image, in his image. So others, while he is, so uh, can we have a continuation after a eight, after? Okay, can I, okay, so, okay, maybe you can ask for uh, But uh, afterwards, you can also testify. No, no, um, it's just for testimonies. So, you can also participate in testimonies. 
control. That will send it to him. That send it to him. Here, and we can still continue up to seven. That's all? Okay, so we're going to move to our testimony portion.